Roger Mudfoss University, I just want to explain why I'm always talking about tendons and I'm always saying, oh, they don't understand this, they don't understand this. Well, they just they admit they don't understand it. This is about tendons. Tendons, basic science, development, repair, regeneration, healing. Well, guess what? We don't know. It says here, tendon rupture are common disabling muscular conditions despite the prevalence of these injuries. Only a limited number of investigators conducting fundamental basic science focused on understanding these processes, the tendon healing. Development of effective therapies hindered by the lack of fundamental guiding data. Nobody knows anything, and they are not working together. You read this article, and this is an article that says we have no clue, and we just got to get together and start working on this and stop fighting each other. And that's what it says. It says it's hindered by the lack of fundamental guiding data and signal transits, all these different mechanisms underlying tending pathologies and, and healing. To propel much needed progress, the New Frontiers Tendon Research Conference co-sponsored this um, at Mount Sinai was held to promote exchange of ideas between tendon researchers and basic science experts from outside the tendon field because nobody in the field is doing any work on it. And then they're fighting each other when they do the work on it. Compartmentalize. Don, it, it's out. Do you read this article? It says the whole thing. We got to stop this and get around. And and a shift in research approach to one of that is more multidisciplinary, driven by collaboration of individual divergent ideas and methodologies, might foster both individual growth and in the field at large. They are not working together. They don't understand what they're doing, and they don't seem to care. All right, so I'm not going to bore you with this, but you saw that they don't really understand tendons. First of all, they don't. Now, there's these these <clears throat> these different SCX and SOX progenitor progenitors contribute to establishment of the junction between cartilage, tendon, and ligaments. Well, what does that mean? Those different style emplacements do different jobs. This is all you have to. You know, it goes into a whole bunch of little this and that, but you don't have to know any of that. What you do need to know is this. It says, thus, the SCX plus and the SOX9 plus progenitor pool, which the progenitor is the, the tenocytes that create these little, little um, tendon emphasis points, so is a unique multipotent cell population. Multipotent cell population gives rise to tenocytes, ligamentocytes and chondrocytes for the establishment of the chondrotenuous ligamentaceous junction. Now, that is how you can move all your thing. Everything moves back and forth with a ligament, a tendon, and these emplacements. So, knowing that they don't understand them, and these are the things that make your body work, let's try to understand them. So I know you say, oh, Roger, that is an extremely audacious statement. They don't understand them. You understand them. They, why wouldn't they understand them? Well, they don't have the, the, the mud fossils. They don't have the mud fossils. They're never going to understand them until they understand the mud fossils. And these are the types of emplacements. These are in the fleshy areas. These are in the bony areas, let's say, ligaments, bone attachments, flesh attachments. These balls attach all over your body and hold you together. It lets your trunk move back and forth. It lets your arms move, your neck, your head, your lips, every single thing. Your skin, actually, your skin is works with that as well. Stretches back and forth with balls in your skin too. It's called ball clay. It's in your skin. It's in, you know, it's kaolin clays and uh, bentonite clays. And the bentonite is the ball clay. It's just below the kaolin, and that gives you your plasticky nature of your skin. Now, these are ligaments that go in between here, and they're just little tiny balls with a whole bunch of balls behind it. I have one I can show you here now. And th then you have your tendons that run from your bones up to your muscles and so forth. And uh, it's a huge, a huge um, area of investigation here, and I've done it. And all these balls are different. Some of them have perfectly round holes inside, some of them have squares, some of them have spikes running all through them. And I will show you all of those. And then I will show you those in nature. And I'm going to show you one that will absolutely blow your mind out of your head. All right, what I want you to look at is right over here. You see up inside of that bone, that's just like this bone right here. And that is where the tendon, I mean the uh, ligament, has a ball that goes in there, and then inside that ball, there's a whole bunch of other little balls. 
like these after the ball. Now, and then the strap runs over to the other bone that's right next to it, and then they can rock around and do this. Now, I'll show you what's inside this ball here. Let's hold on. Let me come over here. All right, you see inside? That ball, you see inside that ball? All those little tiny holes in there. That's how these ligaments attach. And that is a solid attachment. I'm telling you, solid. When those go between bones, you don't fall apart easily. And there's just a little neck going between that and the other ball. It's, it's like two balls and a little neck between them. And I will show you one that's in outer space. It's Ultima Thule. Well, I'm not going to bother showing you Ultima Thule, but this is another one of these tendon emphasis, I mean, um, ligaments. And that was what I just showed you fits into that ball, and that's what holds inside the bone. It will be wrapped around the bone. This little thing lets you come over to the other bone, which is here. And that will uh, let you articulate everything up and down and around and so forth, all based on this. And you can't knock that over. This thing here is tough as hell. Krishna's butter ball is something similar to this. It's a very similar structure and not, not the balls all sticking out, but it's the same sort of thing. It just hasn't eroded. And it's it's on the ground with a tiny little thing like that. And they were so scared it would fall down that they had 12 elephants come up trying to knock it over. It is still there today. 